Here we have a female rough-skinned newt. She's on the move, migration path. You can see how distended her abdomen is, because she's full of eggs. Of course, if we look on the underside, we have bright orange coloration, just aposomatic coloration. That means it's there to warn potential predators that this newt is very toxic. We got Ranger Marcus over here. Already know. With his lifer rough skin newt. It's, like it's a big day. <laughs> this is our fourth newt on the day. We also saw a couple slender salamanders, but I didn't get video of them. They'll there will be more though. <laughs> it's a nice red California slender salamander and a juvenile Sierra and tree frog, which does not want to hang out. This is our fifth slender salamander of the day, Patricoseps attenuatus. All right, we've got a juvenile southern alligator lizard here with a complete tail. Beautiful markings. We managed to get a snake on the day. Here is a nice little Pacific ring neck. I'm gonna let Marcus pick this guy up real quick. Look at that beautiful ventral coloration. Striking snake. <laughs> so these snakes, much like the salamanders, like the moisture, and they actually tend to become more common um, as the fall and winter rains come in. We got our first arboreal salamander of the day. Having a nice little photo session. These ones in this area tend to have a pretty reduced spotting, but it's not the case for all of them. Encetina number one for the day. First of many, I'm sure. One of my favorite photogenic little salamanders. Here we have two Santa Cruz black salamanders. Another lifer for Ranger Marcus. How does it feel? It feels great, dude. <laughs> so many lifers today. This is great. And two of them right next to each other. Yeah. I've already done the spiel on these guys in a couple of videos, I think, so. I'll spare you this time. <laughs> I love how they're just not moving at all, it's great. I will mention it's that a a focus, recent right? survey efforts um, have turned up more of these. However, there was very likely a population bottleneck throughout much of the Santa Cruz Mountains. and. Uh, I'm actually working on a study right now to look at that. I'll keep you posted. We got our second arboreal salamander of the day, a tiny little juvenile. Cute little guy. <laughs> Here's a nice adult yellow-eyed Encetina that Marcus found. Really not wanting to stay still though. But that's a that's a nice looking little salamander. You can see this one's much darker than a lot of ones that I've shown before. <laughs> and a lot, a lot harder to deal with too. Yeah. Here's a puny little neonate arboreal salamander. It's a good reminder that. These guys have direct development. You can see that this is just basically a miniature salamander. They don't go through that aquatic larval stage that many other amphibians have. Here is another beautiful Santa Cruz black salamander. They really like this rocky habitat. You can find them under logs and stuff too, but they, uh, are definitely a little more specialized than some of the other salamanders in the area. Hmm. 
<laughs> and a black salamander number five as well. We didn't record one of them, so. If there's some incongruency with the video and what I'm saying, that's why. And number six. So although these guys um, are not found throughout most of our state and are only in the Santa Cruz Mountains, where they do occur, they can be relatively common, much like some of the other plethodontid species. But overall, they are very few in numbers compared to, say, arboreal salamanders or encetinas. Salamanders keep coming. We have another yellow-eyed encetina and another black salamander. Some good flipping today. Got another encetina here. Some nice redwood forest. It's kind of dumping on us though, so I have to keep this brief. <laughs> yeah. Alright, just flipped a couple nice yellow-eyed encetinas right here. A pretty light one there. And a, another California slender salamander. Racking up the numbers today. Alright, this is our eighth encetina today. There has been a lot of rain in the Santa Cruz Mountains lately, so... Salamanders are abundant. It's just got number 10. Lots of encetinas today. We have a couple of little baby encetinas. Really cute. Here's a yellow-eyed encetina. You might notice that it looks a bit different than what we usually see. It's very yellow in coloration. Um, it likely has some mutation that um, causes it not to produce as much red pigmentation. So the color isn't the usual orange that we typically see in this area. Now you can see the difference between a relatively normal looking one and this really yellow one that Marcus found. Really interesting looking animal. Well, if you can hear that, it's the, it's the sound of thousands of Sierra and tree frogs calling. Pretty spectacular. They're deafening. And here's an example of one of those little uh, <laughs> tree frogs that we heard calling. Crazy how such a small animal can be so loud. Alright, here's what I was after. This is the Santa Cruz long-toed salamander. As you can see, this one's missing the end of its tail, but it seems to be doing fine. Um, these guys are pretty closely related to the California tiger salamander that I've shown before. Um, they're in the same genus, Ambistoma. This is Ambistoma macrodactylum. Macro meaning large, and um, or in this case long, and dactylum referring to the extremity or a long toe. What a beautiful salamander. Pretty amazing what uh, some rain will do. So it's kind of a placid stream with lots of little pools. Up until recently, now it's kind of a, a gushing torrent. <laughs> I don't know if you can even hear me over this. There's a couple California slender salamanders under this little log. These guys are coming up in force now. There's another one, just <laughs> sucked into the leaf litter. So, just kind of out today, checking a spot. I feel like I didn't film quite enough on that day with uh, Marcus recently. A little banana slug. Partly because it was raining so much I didn't want to damage my phone. Uh, but yeah. You should, guys should uh, give his channel a follow. He also posts a lot of cool stuff on Instagram, so you guys should check it out.
some lovely habitat, huh? This is a uh, much more like what the Santa Cruz Mountains um, should be. These wet coastal mountains. This little log had uh, three sun or salamanders under it. I just moved them so that the log wouldn't squish them when I put it back down. I think this is number 12 on this little outing so far. Uh, the trick of steps is all I'm seeing, but can't really complain. Just to remind you guys of the abundance of these salamanders. I just flipped this log, we have one, two, three, four, five, oh. Six. <laughs> okay, so I see six salamanders under this log. Pretty incredible. These are really pretty red Batrachoceps. Batrachoceps is the genus name for these slender salamanders. For anybody wondering. Let's see, any guesses what's gonna be under here? More slender salamanders. Let's see. I see the tail of one there. Which is 39, believe it or not. Uh, 40, 41, and 42. Looks like there's four under here. I was thinking in the springtime, this might even be half decent mountain king snake habitat. Nice forest clearing, lots of nice kind of flat rocks. Not much under them right now it seems, but uh... Looks like they get lots of sun. This rock pile is artificial, somebody did this for some reason, but uh... It's obviously been sitting out here for quite a while, so could be good potentially. Number 48 and 49. And the next log over, 50 and 51. That's a lot of slender salamanders. A little jaunt in the forest yielded about a, a little over 50 slender salamanders and pretty much nothing else in terms of herps, but that's okay. Have to explore some really nice habitat and I'll be back.